holy, Lord God Almighty. Early in the morning our song shall rise to Thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Holy, 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 O the saints adore Thee, casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea. Cherubim and seraphim falling down before Thee, which red and art and evermore shall be. Good morning. My friends, let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this Mass worthily, let us first call to mind our sins and ask God for His mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who delight in innocence and restore it, direct the hearts of your servants to yourself, that caught up in the fire of your spirit, we may be found steadfast in faith and effective in works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren bush in the desert that enjoys no change of season, but stands in a lava waste, a salt in empty earth. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes, its leaves stay green. In the year of drought, it shows no distress, but still bears fruit. More torturous than all else is the human heart, beyond remedy, who can understand it? I, the Lord, alone probe the mind and test the heart to reward everyone according to his ways, according to the merit of his deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Blessed the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the ways of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. He is like a tree planted near running water that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, and the way of the wicked vanishes.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the Pharisees, there was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen and dined sumptuously each day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus covered with sores who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried, and from the nether world where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water to cool my tongue, for I am suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, My child, remember that you received what was good during your lifetime, while Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you, a great chasm is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours or from your side to ours. He said, Then I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers so that he may warn them, lest they too come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. He said, Oh no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Then Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. When this whole pandemic started, I remember talking to a couple from our parish that live in Bay Colony, and they decided to do a food drive for St. Matthew's House and for St. Vincent de Paul. And so they contacted anyone that they knew that were Catholic uh, in their neighborhood. But then one day they said, you know what? Why just the Catholics? Why don't we just put it in the newsletter in Bay Colony and have everyone get involved? Well, what happened next was they called me and asked me, Father, do you have a truck? The contributions were so overwhelming that they couldn't deal with it themselves. They needed help to take it to St. Matthew's or St. Vincent de Paul. And they continued to do that week after week after week. And I would go there and greet people as they, as they would bring food. And, you know, at, at first it started, you know, bring something that you don't need, that you have in your pantry, and perhaps you're leaving for up north and uh, you're not going to need it. But then people were like, you know what? We're not just going to bring stuff that we don't need. You tell us what they need and we'll go and buy it. And again, the generosity was so overwhelming. When the first stimulus checks were coming in, I was getting phone calls from people and asking, Father, do you know someone who may need that? Because we don't. I remember one email that I got from a woman explaining that she is on Social Security, but that seems to cover all of her expenses, and she asked if there was a family that I knew of that could use it more than she could, that she was not going to touch that money. Again, overwhelming generosity, looking after those who are less fortunate than we are. For weeks that the church was closed, I thought about you know, our poor boxes. Um, the money that is put in those poor boxes goes uh, directly to St. Vincent de Paul, and so I was worried that St. Vincent de Paul was not going to have enough resources to help those in need. But people didn't forget 
about St. Vincent de Paul. We were receiving checks in the mail to go to St. Vincent de Paul to, to help those in need. And so the generosity continued to, to be so overwhelming. It humbles me to see how good and generous you are. So the question this Lenten season poses to each one of us, what do we possess within us that compels us to mercy, that opens our eyes to see others as sisters and brothers in God, that enable us to reach out to catch the stumbling and defend the innocent? And of course, conversely, what is missing within us that can't see beyond our own needs and wants and expectations to realize the Lazaruses at our own gates. May God open our eyes to see the poor, the needy, the forgotten at our own doors and open our hearts to welcome them into our lives with compassion and respect. In welcoming the Lazaruses to our tables, may we welcome the Lord. In giving to them from the bounty he has given us, may we express our gratitude for his providence. Through the Lazaruses we meet and welcome, may we discover God's joy in giving to others as he has given to us. We acknowledge our dependency upon God for help and blessings as we place our petitions before him. For the church, may her words and actions guide people to a better understanding of the compassion of God. Let us pray to the Lord. For those with power over the distribution and use of the earth's resources, may they use them for the good of all. Let us pray to the Lord. For the faithful departed, may they enjoy the unending light of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. For Betty Burkett, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. In a moment of silence, let us present to God all of our intentions. We pray to the Lord. O oh God, pour out your compassion upon us. Give us a loving heart and a generous spirit to be like you. Give us all that we need to do your holy will. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. By this present sacrifice, we pray, O Lord, sanctify our observance, that what Lenten discipline outwardly declares, it may inwardly bring about. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, for you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, and with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Frank our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship, 
Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us now pray together in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from ever evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always freed from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us now share this peace with one another. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We pray the act of spiritual communion with those that are joining us for this Eucharist from home. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May this sacrifice, O God, remain active in its effects and work ever more strongly within us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Abide with your servants, O Lord, who implore the help of your grace, that they may receive from you the support and guidance of your protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us now go in peace. Have a beautiful day. Thank you. May charity and love prevail, the God is ever found, brought here together by Christ's love, by love are we thus bound. With grateful joy and holy fear, God's charity we learn, let us with heart and mind and soul now love God in return. Forgive we now each other's faults, as we our faults confess, and let us love each other well in Christian holiness.